Look what we've got in the house today, everybody. A Kenwood SA3500 from 1977. 40 watt per channel integrated amplifier. Listen, next step is we're going to go over and put it on the bench. I'm going to take it apart, show you the inside, and then we'll kind of come back and maybe we can give it a listen. Okay, now we've got the Kenwood KA3500 opened up. And we'll do a little tour around the inside. These devices here are output transistors in what's called a push-pull configuration. You can see all the circuitry there. This is the preamp board here. I'm going to give it a turn. You kind of see it a little better that way. Input switching, uh, your tone controls, volume controls, and then power switch. And then, of course, your preamp board in there. The heat sink, which is a big heat sink for a 40 watt per channel unit. Nice big E-Core iron transformer. And then this is your power supply and your power supply caps and rectifier. And then, of course, your connections on the back. And let's turn around and go to the back real quick. And we'll do that tour now. So as you can see, we've got a funnel in the ground, tuner in, an auxiliary, and then a lot of tape deck stuff. Now, this is a what's called what's commonly called a DIN connector. And a lot of tape decks, especially reel-to-reels, had DIN connectors. So it was just one cable connect up. It took care of record play, everything else. Really nice. You can tell back in the day they didn't use very thick speaker wire. And then, of course, we come along, come around to the back. And then, again, older units had lots of AC outlets to plug additional ancillary equipment into. So anyway, that's the inside look uh, and the back of the Kenwood KA3500. Okay, here's a look at the front panel of the Kenwood KA3500. Starting from left to right, we have our power switch. We have our speakers off A pair, B pair, and both pair together. We have a headphone jack, power LED, balance control, tone controls, bass and treble, and they're numbered rather than just graduated lines, so it's kind of interesting. A switch that does two functions. It's loudness on one side, or a high filter, which is a cut at 7,000 hertz on the other side. We have our volume control, obviously. We have our input selectors, and they're interesting in that when you push them, the other ones pop out, so you can't have two things on at the same time. Then we come down to our dubbing tape monitoring and so forth was a big deal, and copying tapes was a big deal in those days. So you have A to B dubbing, B to A dubbing. You can choose to listen to A, you can choose to listen to your source, or you can listen to the B tape deck. That was common when you had three head cassette decks because you could hear the, hear the music after it was recorded on the tape with the third head. Now you'll see this brand of Kenwood. If you noticed on the back, it was called Trio Kenwood Corporation. So oftentimes in other marketplaces, you would see this branded as Trio, not Kenwood. So it's still in the early days of Kenwood. So. That's the front panel of the KA3500 integrated amplifier. Hey everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. As I said, look what we got in the house. We've got a Kenwood KA3500 integrated amplifier from 1977. So this thing's almost 50 years old. Uh, beautiful piece, 40 watts a channel into 8 ohms, 45 watts a channel into 4 ohms. Uh, speakers were usually of higher impedance in those days. Uh, and again, it's current limiting because it does have an A and B set of speakers, as you saw on the back of the unit. What I'm doing right now is I've got it set up. I've got it plugged in. I'm going to use the MXN10 from Cambridge as the streamer device. Uh, what a great way to bring a, mo an, a vintage piece into the modern age is to add the MXN10. Gives you streaming from Tidal, Cobuzz, Deezer, obviously Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect, and music on your own hard drive, plus internet radio, which is really, really cool. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reset and I'm actually going to do a sound clip on this, just one, uh, with my Tascam microphone. And I'm going to try and hook it up to my phone and see if it works that way. If it doesn't, we'll figure it out. But I'll be back at the end for a summary.
Well, hopefully you could hear how good this thing sounds. For being almost 50 years old, it's remarkable. I did not have the subwoofer on. I'm not sure how the bass comes through. Again, I'm trying something new by using my Tascam stereo mic plugged into the phone rather than recording to the SD drive and then transferring it. But anyway, it is remarkable sounding. I mean, it's quite a nice piece. Uh, it's a friend of mine's. So unfortunately, I got to give it back to him at some point, but I think I'm going to hang on to it for a little while. So again, uh, KA, excuse me, Kenwood KA 3500 integrated amplifier from 1977. If you like the videos, please give me a like and a subscribe. We are, we are just this close to getting to a thousand subscribers and I'd love to get over the top of that soon. Um, if you have anything, any comment or any questions about this or anything else that I talk about, please comment. Any of you guys who've commented know I read them, I respond, uh, and I try and provide the information you request if there is information uh, requested. And I just want to say thanks so very much for everyone for taking time out of your day to watch my videos. This is Ed Holmwood, the Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, signing off.